The cesium-137 released by the Chernobyl nuclear power station disaster had a half-life of 30 years. That means that after 30 years, half of that cesium-137 will have radioactively decayed into something else. So the definition of half-life is the time it takes for the amount of a radioactive isotope to decrease to half of its original mass. Now, half-lives can have different durations. For example, iodine-131, used in medical imaging of the thyroid, has a half-life of only eight days. So after eight days, half of the iodine-131 will have radioactively decayed into something else. Now, if you do have this procedure, you'll, set, you'll be so radioactive that you'll set off the radiation detectors at airports, and your wee will also be radioactive. So a lot of people don't stay at home and expose their family to radiation. They go to hotels and expose hotel workers to it instead. So let's look at an animation of how half-life progresses. This graph is quite a common thing for the IB to do. So percentage of isotope remaining on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. Let's run it through. And you can see the green isotopes decay into the red ones as time progresses, given that exponential curve. Let's replay that. So I'm starting with 100 radioactive isotopes. And when the clock starts, after four seconds, half of them have decayed to red. So the half-life is four seconds. If I run it through another four seconds, half of the others have decayed. So now there's 25 remaining. Another four seconds takes me down to 12 or 13, half of that number again. So for every four seconds that time progresses, the percentage of isotope remaining is halved. So 100, 50, 25, 12 and a half, et cetera, et cetera. Let's look at some classic questions. A sample of radioactive isotope has a mass of 512 grams, 10 second half-life. There's a little trick here. So what mass of isotope remains after 50 seconds? This is reasonably straightforward. The trick's the second part. So I like to write it out in these little tables. At zero seconds, there's 512 grams. After 10 seconds, there's gonna be half as much. After another 10 seconds, there's gonna be half as much remaining again. Another 10 seconds is going to half my amount. Again. And finally, after 50 seconds, I'm going to have 16 grams remaining. That's relatively straightforward, but the next question has a trick in it. What mass of isotope has decayed after 30 seconds? It's tempting to say 64 grams, but that's wrong. That's how much is left after 30 seconds. The amount that's decayed, we well, have to compare those two numbers. I started with 512 and I've got 64 left. So 512 minus 64 gives me 448 grams. That's the mass that has decayed. Next question, three grams of radioactive isotope remains after 16 seconds. If the half-life is four seconds, what mass of isotope was initially present? So I don't know how many grams there were at zero seconds where we started. That's the question. But after four seconds, I still don't know. Eight seconds, 12 seconds, 16 seconds. I do know after 16 seconds, I've got three grams. So notice I went down in four second increments because the half-life is four seconds. So after 12 seconds, there must have been six grams because of that doubling. Double it again to find out at eight seconds. Once more for four seconds. So at the beginning, there must have been 48 grams at zero seconds. I just go through to make sure, yeah, 48 grams, zero seconds. The half-life is four seconds. So I've got 24 grams, yeah, that looks good. Identify the isotope of polonium used to murder Alexander Litvinenko in London a few years ago from the following data. 
224 micrograms of the isotope decays to 28 micrograms. So let's set up that little table again. 224 micrograms at zero days. I'm gonna half that, but I don't know how long the half-life is. So I'm just gonna put lambda. Lambda is the symbol for half-life. Halving again, that's twice as many half-lives. Halving again, that's three half-lives. Ah, so I'm down to my 28 micrograms. Now I know that the three half-lives is 414 days. It's in the question. So just by rearranging, I can work out what the half-life is, which is 138 days. So that was polonium 210. Deduce the half-life from the graph below. So at zero time, I had 160 grams of my isotope. And it took five time units to get to half of that, which is 80. Oh, so there we are. So the half-life is five. Oh. Now the IB puts minus one U on your paper if you forget to put the units in, but you can only lose one point maximum per paper. They also put minus SF if you screw up the sig figs in a question where it's needed. And again, you can only lose one point in IB for doing that. Which is real, but not IB real. That's where you get the answer right, but the IB marks it wrong. Well done, IB. And one thing I also need to mention, because it came up on last year's exam, is that half-life is a statistical analysis. That means if you just look at one atom, you won't be able to use half-life to determine when it will decay. It only works if you have a large number of atoms. Then you can apply that mathematical technique. I don't think anyone's gonna understand this. <laughs>